Digital Foundry has actually made multiple videos about the Halo Infinite reveal Unreal Engine. If you guys don't know who Digital Foundry are, very popular YouTube channel that uh, are incredibly informative with like how engines work and graphical quality and like they know the nuts and bolts of like every engine and things like that. And they break things down really well and they actually would be kind of a cool thing to watch. They have like this video they released uh, a couple days ago uh, talking about like uh, the move that they're originally doing with the uh, Unreal Engine. And so what's wrong with slip space kind of thing. Like kind of pointing out like the flaws of slip space and the benefits of Unreal, but also what they saw with the Unreal uh, Foundry project. There was some parts where I was like, yeah, there's some default uh, items utilized at it. Clearly the slip space engine was a an issue. I would say for the, a liability even for the studio, uh, and the game, the final game of Halo Infinite definitely did not live up to where we think, did not live up to where I would have expected it to land, and as a result, by shifting to Unreal, uh, that does create some interesting opportunity, shall we say? Right. Now I think Alex, I think firstly we should say that we're we're generally not fans of studios abandoning in-house technology, mm -hmm. and do tend to prefer seeing seeing studios sort of leverage their own internal tech that's very interesting to look at and discuss and analyze but this is definitely one of those few cases where i actually see a compelling argument for making the shift because i think from an engineering manpower money and just general investment it makes a lot of sense for them to actually make the switch to unreal wouldn't she say yeah like i would say so like it's been pretty much proven that like yeah uh, slip space is kind of a nightmare and like three for three tried to make it work and it didn't work and they're like okay now we need to be halo studios <laughs> i think that's like its original origins so it's actually really old in that aspect and they do he's talking about the uh, slip space engine being based off of the blam engine which is true slip space is a rebuilding of the blam engine but like they even we talked about it in dev blogs before the release of infinite that they were digging through all this old code and finding all these cool little nuggets about stuff yeah, but I'm not starting this, Josh. I'm just replying because I don't want Tommy to feel like I ignored him or anything. I'm, I, a lot of times I'm just reading chat. I'll be, I'm watching the video and talking with you guys. And I don't want to like get sidetracked because you, you, you've seen just the stream alone how easily sidetracked I can get. I'm, I'm getting sidetracked right now talking about being sidetracked. <laughs> Wait, let's get back into it. Mentioned that in the Microsoft blog, Xbox Wire blog, that kind of accompanied this announcement. Uh, so you have that synergy with getting a lot of people on board. You also have the synergy across right. Microsoft, I would say, where you have uh, okay. 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 studios okay. that use Unreal Engine pretty well, like um, Ninja Theory, as well as The Coalition, where you can lean on some of the technology maybe they're developing too and cross-pollinate uh, across um, mm -hmm. teams at Microsoft. Also, which I would be a great thing to do because, I mean, even though it was short, and I still need to play it. But everything I've seen when it comes to, um, seeing was Saga, right? The game looks phenomenal. It's the graphic quality is incredible. It's, it's it's insane that they were able to pull this stuff off. I think there were some weak points to Halo Infinite's graphics that we talked about before, and uh, to advance that engine to the next level of being future-proofed and current-gen only because it was a cross-gen game, uh, bringing it to have current-gen features like something like ray trace global illumination, uh, that would take a lot of engineering time in general. Uh, uh, and making something like that with the time and resources you could put into it, why not just buy the technology to do that in the first place, you know, something like Lumen, which comes as a part of Unreal Engine 5. Basically, you're spending less time making base tech stuff and spending more time potentially making game stuff, art, game content, instead of engineering exactly. time. And, and Yeah, this is what exactly what I've heard from 343 devs, where people used to work at 343. They were saying that like they would have to wait on tech to update some new system so they can make what they wanted to make in the campaign and there was what there was creating such a huge bottleneck for the development of halo infinite was trying to make an entire new engine and an entirely new game and also an entirely new like live service model live open world all that kind of stuff like it was a lot it was a mess <laughs> and so like and microsoft has, has no issue in the buying things as we know from them buying in the Activision Blizzard, like that was just kind of crazy that they can just 
dropped sixty nine billion dollars and oh, and like two thirds of gaming nowadays or whatever. But yeah, <laughs> you know, I think that's a compelling reason to to change over. As long with getting rid of legacy stuff, um, that engine. Yes that you can talk about too. There was a lot of legacy issues in it, I think, oh, yes. that we saw come to bear when Halo Infinite came out, right? Absolutely. I mean, obviously things like indirect lighting was very limited. There was a lot of issues with the way that distant scenery was displayed. Uh, they didn't handle shadows well in that regard. A lot of limitations just in terms of just the overall level of detail on display. And I did watch this previously. There is one really interesting point about the inconsistency of character model movement uh, and how like the character will kind of wobble and i thought it was really interesting i'll talk about it in a bit here and, and just everything else going on it didn't come together in a way that i found especially compelling visually at a distance right um and was also very limited yeah, the just floating point air. modern image treatment the image quality was not great the ta solution was rather poor i would argue oh yeah uh, among wow. so many there's just so many other things plus it launched with a lot of problems that were fixed but things like consistency in terms of how frame rates were displayed uh in cutscenes anything that was not perfectly divisible by uh 60 or whatever or 120 in that case didn't display correctly for instance so right. there, there was definitely some strange issues there so also or like all the animations running in 30 frames per second that's like it was so jarring. So, like you said, you know, working with Unreal sort of opens up the doors in terms of who they can hire, and knowing three four three's previous sort of working methods with the high contractor turnover, employing a lot of people that would basically come in work for a chunk of time and then leave the project, uh, it definitely behooves them if they're going to continue down that road to have access to. Uh, people that can just jump in and start working with Unreal rather than training them up on this new engine, using them for a year, and then they're gone. Yeah. Which, not great. And I think a lot of <laughs> their problems probably centered from the way that the team was sort of structured and built, if I had to guess. Mm -hmm. But let's talk about, so I do want to kind of go through then the sort of like the advantages and the disadvantages of s switching to Unreal, because... On paper, there's a lot of advantages, but there's also issues that we see crop up with this engine that have actually plagued nearly every release thus far this generation. Mm -hmm. uh, so, <laughs> so I mean, just uh, let's get the ball rolling right away. <laughs> Lumen is a big one, right? Because indirect lighting, uh, just global illumination in general, something that Slip Space Engine didn't do well. Yeah, um, it really failed. Sh it really fell short here, right? Mm -hmm. there, there's enough images where you sent me over slack of like just <laughs> random glowing blue stuff uh during the halo infinite launch yeah like what they're talking about here is like you can see like this is all in shadow right but like you can see how evenly shadowed this rock is and like how the under part of this rock is actually kind of like glowing right it's not this should be darker right here and it should get be getting darker the more the closer to the ground that you get with it, right? They kind of cast shadows on itself, and it's not doing that in the slip space engine. And like, yeah, oddly kind of glowing under parts of it just uh, looks weird. That was a big issue in the game visually. Like right here specifically, like this should be like almost black right here. And it's like super lit. And it's like and actually brighter than the top half of the of the rock. So it's kind of this is the kind of stuff they're pointing out, which Again, like kind of it might feel like a nitpick, but it really does affect like your immersion into the world. It makes you feel like you're playing a video game rather than being in a world that you're playing. If that makes sense. Um, I don't know, obviously, if they're going for that same semi open world design, but in general, getting good indirect lighting is actually a big part of Halo's history uh, because both Halo 1 and I would say Halo 3 went especially overboard for their time period of doing really good indirect lighting and like good area lights and things like that, uh, baked stuff, but still really well done for the time period. And then it kind of fell short uh, as you get to titles like Halo Infinite, which had different requirements, you know, moving times of day and larger worlds right. spanning across generations. Beyond Lumen, though, there's another thing that I actually thought about when you were even just talking yeah. about Halo Infinite earlier, and that was uh, world precision issues. If you recall, oh, yes. <laughs> your hands and a lot of objects in the game world in Halo Infinite, especially on console for some reason, would Dude. like jiggle. Do I remember when I first saw this, I thought it was like some kind of 
heat wave effect that they tried to do to make it seem like, oh, you're just like out in the world and this atmosphere is like, you know, distorting your image or something like that. That's what I thought it originally was. But this is an actual issue with the game engine of not having, not being able to precisely put like a point of data in a place in the world. Like it's, it's a really weird thing. But like, I remember when I first saw this, I thought it was something with like, uh, like some heat wave effect that they tried to do. I think this actually might play a factor also with like, um, if you guys, if you guys remember the, uh, the scene in Halo five where chief kind of wipes his thumb over the empty slot of Cortana. It's like one of the first cut scenes and people thought his hands were shaking this right here. Like look at, look at his hands, like shaking. You can see his hands like shaking and like wiggling around a bunch. This is back when before slip space. Like that shouldn't be wiggling that much. And this is a cutscene where it's doing it too. And it shouldn't be like some heat wave exhausting. He's inside a pelican in space. So that shouldn't be a thing either. Like it's something that's just a weird thing that happens with the, the blam engine. And it seems like it just kind of carried over with Halo Infinite as well. It looked yeah, like precision the, issues. It seemed like the further you got away from zero zero, the center of the world, uh, the the precision, the math precision caused major issues with how the polygons were rasterized. Yeah. Or the vertices, I guess. So you get this sort of warping swimming effect that uh, reminded me of Kingpin. Mm -hmm. if I'm honest. Best game ever made, right? Uh, uh, <laughs> these types of problems are not necessarily, like, they have existed. And it's a known thing, but usually I feel like yeah. Look at the hands like wobble of the center with the player or within like a certain. You know what I mean? Yeah. Rather than just having here's the center of the world and the farther you away. Basically, the problem is as the numbers get bigger, the decimal, pl the amount of decimal places available shrinks. So your precision is like going down mathematically, mm -hmm. and that seemed to be what was happening in Halo Infinite. Yeah. So, so what they're meaning by like precision, as in like data points or like these polygons where they meet together. That's like a point and we have all of these like in an open world that you need to calculate all of these. And so the more you add on the, uh, without like blowing up people's PCs, you need to kind of like lower that precision a little bit. And some of them, sometimes you can get away with it. Sometimes you can't. And the way three, four, three had to do the precision and like this large scale stuff, it just, it, it couldn't get away with it. I wonder how much time it actually took to make like this type of like environment in Unreal. Cause I think this is just like, if I remember correctly, I pointed out in the previous video, this is just like an asset rip from infinite placed into Unreal Engine. Like how, how much time does it actually take to just make this uh, and make it look this good? Infinite Forges made like a Halo Infinite uh, what would Halo Infinite look like in Unreal Engine? And this is just him who put this together. And like, what this was, he put this out back on October 17, 2021. So just before the release of Infinite. And I mean, I probably could message him and ask him, like, how long it actually put him, took him to put something like this together by himself. Welcome to Zeta Halo. This is a completely fan made environment built in Unreal Engine 4 in anticipation for Halo Infinite's campaign come December 8th. I focus heavily on taking inspiration from Halo CE to bring back that mystery, hope, and wonder that's true to the ring experience that we know and love. Thanks, so this was just like one dude having some fun with Unreal 4 and was able to make all this kind of stuff. During your exploration of this environment, you'll come across floor-runner structures that guide you and give you a sense of scale to let you know that out in the distance there's more to be seen and more to be found. Yeah, you can see, like, compare that to what we saw for the uh, for this, right? Obviously, it's a little bit better fidelity, a little more coherent, a little bit, because not coherent, but consistent. Like, you can kind of see how there's a little copy and pasting when it comes to, like, the wear and tear on, like, the pillars that um, Infinite Forges did in here. But I'm kind of curious, like, what would this be like, uh, maybe take a couple, like a week or two to make something like this, you think? And I also see there, Tommy again with the five super chat. I still think Halo Infinite is a next gen looking game. Uh, one of the major issues with the game 
is the default brightness. Well, I think that's kind of what they were touching on earlier with uh, what Digital Foundry was talking about here with like saying like how many things were kind of glowing, right? When it comes to like what we are, like 812 on this, so like this rock in particular saying like this was glowing, right? Because like this under part of the rock is brighter than the top half of this rock and it should be the exact opposite. And when you kind of walk around it a little bit more, like you, it's not casting shadows on itself. It gets a little like darker, kind of like right here at this angle, right? But you can see like how that shadow like kind of comes into place. It doesn't actually like, it's not persistent consistently there. Like, look at that. Like that's super bright right there. There's no definition of like light cast, you know, what shadows casting on themselves. And then as you rotate a specific way, then the shadow actually kind of starts to appear there. It's like the little tricks like that, but again, like trying to work in slip space to make it work like an open world game was kind of funky. But I still think if it is a great looking game, though, don't get me wrong. I just think it will, it will look a lot better in Unreal Engine. <laughs> you know? A game like Halo actually historically, especially like since like Halo Reach, there's been a lot of like point lights everywhere. Like, you know, all the all the enemies with their plasma bolts flying around. There's all these lights in the environment. All the Covenant architecture has tons of little tiny lights all over it. Um, even Forerunner structures tend to. And, you know, seeing something like that in Halo would be really amazing, uh, probably to amp up the atmosphere even more than this trailer already shows. Um, one Looks thing that so I also good. thought about <laughs> while looking at this trailer, they don't really show it off. They show off, like, I think two elites and Master Chief, the Master Chief, the uh, John Master Spartan. Chief. One thing Halo Infinite had and I think didn't do too well in, in comparison to maybe even its predecessors was character rendering. Pelican. Oh God. Guy, you know, the guy wait, driving wait, wait. the Pelican. Uh, ca character rendering in Halo is, it's kind of an up and down thing. Yeah, actually, it's an up and down thing, right? 343 managed to nail it with Halo 5. The character rendering in that game was stunning. Do you mm -hmm. remember that? Yeah. Oh, that's what I was. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, that's great. But then you get to Halo Infinite and it's like goes down again. Yeah. It was a massive step down. Like it was like shockingly so. Like, wait, what happened here? Mm -hmm. Especially the pilot that you spend so much of the game with. He just looks so janky compared to everything in Halo 5, which. Yeah. I, I don't <laughs> I know guess, about that. Yeah. <laughs> I guess here they, they, they could lever. I mean, Unreal's very good with rendering humans. There's stuff like, of course, meta humans in there that they could potentially leverage for some things if needed. But I suspect it'll be more custom. It allows for some more right. interesting types of materials than just, you know, like metals and non-metals, <laughs> like diffuse and specular. The two types of metal. The two types of things on this earth. And, you know, I think the Halo series in the past especially had some really interesting looking materials in it. I always go back to like those covenant structures that had like weird, funky space plastics yes. and stuff. Uh, I could imagine that they could do yeah. some really great material work using something like Substrate to make Covenant stuff look really cool. Yeah, I kind of touched on that in this in my previous video, talking about like how the stuff that they put together in the Foundry thing was much more like a I think would build something that we would use. What would be like you know it was more like a practice of like if we're, we're going to build a level in Unreal with the team what would that look like how would that function this is a test run kind of thing but they probably could still use those assets that they made to for the actual game itself there, there are some negative points to unreal to consider right, right. Uh, especially first of all in its current iteration it's still extremely heavy on the cpu and there's still issues with sort of stuttering and like data streaming just moving through the world and this is going to be a large game probably <laughs> yes <laughs> And it feels like a perfect storm for this sort of thing to manifest itself with the only caveat being here, or not caveat, but more like the, the positive thing being here is that I can imagine them, I could see them leveraging knowledge from a studio like the Coalition in building this to mm -hmm. ensure that, like they kind of did at the end to get Halo Infinite somewhat fixed up. Uh, to really help them, like, I think if they do it oh, yeah, right. They definitely use the Coalition for that kind of stuff, yeah. But yeah, I think uh, in the rest of it, they kind of talk about like how sometimes in Unreal Engine 5, the, sometimes like the rendering of things can be inconsistent and like hover around 68, but not be a consistent 60 or be like at 58 or 59 frames per second kind of thing. But yeah, I think it was a really interesting talk that uh, Digital Foundry brought up with this whole thing, talking about like the shortcomings of Slipspace, some of the shortcomings of the Unreal Engine as well.